the students of class 9. This video is uh, for class 9. For those students who take economics for the good three subject. Today is 15th of April and the day is Thursday and I welcome you to economics class. For today I have taken a new topic called mixed economy. This is given on page number 83.5.7. So, dear children, today we shall discuss the definition of mixed economy and uh, we shall also very importantly discuss its characteristics. So, definition and characteristics of mixed economy. Before I begin this topic, it should be very clear to you that this lesson we started with the capitalistic economy, then socialistic economy, and now it is the mixed economy. It is understood to you that socialistic economy is the one where the resources are owned and managed by public authorities whereas in the capitalistic economy the resources are owned and managed by private individuals now in the capitalistic economy there is no interference of the government and in the socialistic economy in fact everything is managed by the government there is not much scope left for the private individuals. There are some countries, there are some economies who neither adopt socialistic economy or socialistic pattern nor do they adopt the capitalistic pattern. They have chosen the best elements of socialism and the elements from the capitalism and they have mixed. When they mixed, they get a third type of economy which is called a mixed economy. So what is a mixed economy then? Mixed economy combines the elements of socialist and capitalist economy. That means socialist plus capitalist economy when you mix it or third type of economy you get and that is called mixed economy. So this is the definition of mixed economy. So that means in a mixed economy you find both the features, the characteristics and the elements of the capitalism as well as the other the socialism. That means in a mixed economy you find the socialistic pattern as well as the capitalistic pattern. You find the private as well as the public. When we say public it means belonging to the government. So public sector and the private sector is to be found in the mixed economy. In the capitalistic economy, you find only the private sector. In the socialistic economy, you find only the public sector. In the mixed economy, you find both the private and the public. So, private and the government, when they mix and work together for the development of an economy, we call it as a mixed economy. So, now, so that was the definition of the mixed economy. And for your information, our country, India, follows of mixed economy. Indian economy is called a mixed economy because in India we find both the elements of capitalism as well as the elements of socialism. That means socialistic economy and the capitalistic economy both exist side by side in India with its simple words private and the public both you find in India. So India follows a pattern of economy called mixed economy. So Indian economy is called a mixed economy. Now let us come to the features now, characteristics. Already I told you there is the coexistence of public and the private sectors. You find public also means government. Government sectors also you find here as well as you find the private sector. Like government schools are also there, public sector, private schools are also there. Private sector, private schools, private hospital, government schools, government hospitals, together they exist and they work for the benefit of the people as well as that of nation. So there is a coexistence of public and the private sector. Next is the coexistence of features of socialistic and capitalistic economy. This point number two, the characteristics of point number two follows the definition. In the definition it is clearly mentioned that mixed economy combines the characteristics of the capitalist and the socialist economy. So not only that the private and the public coexist but they follow every feature 
of the private and the public. That's the socialistic economy and the capitalist economy. Number three, economic planning. This is a very, very special feature. Economic planning means for the development of an economy, every nation plans which they try to achieve in the next one year, in the next five years. Normally, we have five year planning. We shall discuss about uh, this in detail in the in some other lessons. But normally we plan. What do we? Where do we expect ourselves to be or to see ourselves in the next five years? What do we want to achieve in a long run, like five years? That's a called economic planning. Economic planning, remember, is a very important feature of the socialistic economy. Capitalist economy does not plan. Because it is privately owned and managed, there is no planning in the capitalist economy. Capitalist economy does not follow any economic planning. But this is a very very important feature. Economic planning is a very very important feature of the socialist economy. Since mixed economy follows both the capitalistic and the socialistic, in mixed economy we have economic planning. And this mixed economy has taken this feature from the socialist economy. You have already understood what is economic planning and this is taken from socialistic economy. Next is regulation and control of private sector. So you have come to know that in the mixed economy there is private sector but private sector is not fully independent. They are given restricted freedom, restricted freedom wherever they are stray, wherever they uh, do anything which is not, which is uh, against the public or the economy or the government or the nation. The government has authority to put some control over them. That is the regulation and control. One example is the licensing policy. Everybody has a right to work. You want to start a factory of your own, you are allowed to do that. But you need to obtain the license from the government. That means you are under the government, indirectly, directly or indirectly. You are under the government. And once you have established your factory, you need to make the payment to the laborers. You cannot pay a hundred rupee to a labor when you have hired them for full day. You need to make a commensurate payment to them. That means why you have to make them the payment which has been decided by the government. So that means directly or indirectly, though you may be a private individual or a private sector or a private owner or a private entrepreneur, still you have to follow the norms, the guidelines which is decided by the government. So that means government is a regulatory authority. There are regulatory authority which is uh, uh, invited even on the private sector. So there, there is some regulation and control on the private sector. Next is promotion of social welfare. The objective of the mixed economy is social welfare. Remember, in the capitalistic economy, they used to work for private welfare, profit. Socialistic economy worked for the welfare, welfare of the public. That's the reason why. In the government hospitals, doctors are available uh, free. You don't have to make any payment to them. You, you may even get the medicines, which is also free of cost. Because the objective of the government is not to make money, but the objective is to provide the social welfare. So that is the promotion of social welfare. Next is price mechanism. Price mechanism means the government has an important role to play in determining the price of a commodity. That's the reason why in a mixed economy, the price of the essential items are decided by the government. Like in a fair price shop, you know, government distributes at a very nominal rate. In the price of the electricity, the rate at which the uh, electricity is supplied to you, the government decides. Transportation, like Indian Railway, there the government decides the price, which is very, very nominal, which is very, very little, less, so that it can be afforded by each and every citizen, irrespective of whether he is very, very poor or rich everyone can afford so that is the price mechanism the price is bare minimum and even the price of the product being produced in the capitalist economy or the price of the product being produced by the private individuals 
our private sector are also kept under observation and wherever necessary the government intervenes because the objective of the mixed economy is social welfare wherever necessary the price also is decided curbed and controlled by the government next is the profit motive though i said that social welfare is the motive but profit motive is also the motive of the mixed economy because in the so in the mixed economy you find the coexistence of the public and the private the public 100% they work for the social welfare they go for the social welfare but the private sector works for the they work for the profit motive they work only for the profit restricted freedom is given to them as far as they don't create any such difficulties to the public so long they can enjoy it but wherever wherever the public starts public start facing problem regulation and control is also there okay so prior uh, social welfare is also there this is for public sector this is for private sector so profit motive is given but wherever the public starts public start facing problem there is regulation and control where the government may start intervening and the last one is preservation of freedom freedom means each and every individual has the freedom to work freedom to choose work freedom to start a business and make out a living in the mixed economy so that freedom is of course given to every citizen by the mixed economy so dear children these are some of uh, the features of the mixed economy if you turn on your page if you turn on your books you will find that these all what we, whatever we discussed today are given on page number 83 to 85 please do a thorough reading you will understand of course whatever we discuss this please listen to this video twice or thrice and then read the, those pages given on page number 83 to 85 you will definitely understand and after understanding there are some assignments to be done i will meet you again only on the next week so for this week there are some assignments to be done Turn on page number 89, you will find question number 1 and 2 and turn on the page up to question number 8 from the subtype and from the essay type, page number 90, question number 1 to 9. Please do attend wherever you have difficulties, wherever you are stuck. We are always available. Make phone calls, do text us, we are always available to you. So, for this one week, please do solve these uh, problems and you can send the answers to me on my private number please do not use this app for this send in my private number i will definitely uh, respond to it so till then take care of you and please do study well thank you